The newest Crow film with Bill Skarsgård marks the fifth film in the franchise. So today, let's rank all the films from worst to best. Hey everybody, my name is Justin here. I try to watch everything that hits theaters and on streaming services. If you guys are like me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and click that notification for more up and coming content. Leave your list down below. How would you rank all five of the Crow films? Did you know that there were five of them? Because recently, I didn't know, but I watched all of them. So let's get into my ranking. Coming in in last place, The Crow City of Angels. This is the second installment in the franchise and was released in 1996. I gotta get this out of the way. Most of the sequels are bad. And this is the one that I had the most struggle with. The one that I really just couldn't get on board with. The one that looked absolutely terrible compared to all the other films. While it tries to expand on that original film, it ultimately fails to capture that haunting vibe that the first Crow film had. This film focuses on Ash Corvin, played by Vincent Perez. He's a mechanic who lives with his son, and he's brutally murdered by a gang. It tries to capture the aesthetics of that original film, and this is where it feels like it's really style over substance. It tries its hardest to recapture the tone and vibe of that original movie, and it fails to deliver a compelling story. Because Vincent Perez's portrayal of Ash Corvin lacks emotional depth. There's vulnerability to Brandon Lee's character and that's stripped away within this movie and it's hard to really latch onto this character as he's seeking revenge. You just don't really care about his journey. It's less engaging than that original film and it fails to deliver on that gothic vibe that works so well with that original movie. It's a really just straightforward revenge story. There's not much to really latch onto, not much that I found to be really interesting or building on the world within that first film the edgy tone is absent within here it doesn't have a great soundtrack either so easily this is the weakest film in the franchise coming in in fourth place the crow wicked prayer this isn't very good either then this was released in 2005 and this stars edward furlong from terminator 2 as the crow within this movie the overall gothic tone of the whole franchise is gone it takes place in a small town it's very bright throughout this movie a lot of it taking place during the daytime and it does not feel grimy at all. Edward Furlong is terribly miscasted within this film. There is no emotion to this character. There's no hatred for the people that killed him. The revenge storyline is absolutely weak within this movie. And the people that killed him is led by Luke Crash and his gang is trying to harness dark powers through ancient rituals, which adds this supernatural layer to the film. But with all of that, it feels very convoluted with the new supernatural elements to the movie trying to expand on the universe of the crow the central theme of revenge is there but it's overshadowed by all this other mess within the movie it tries to have the stories of good and evil but it's really disjointed and does not allow for this compelling story to fill heavy and reach the heights of that original film it looks terrible and the whole different setting does not work within this movie and edward furlong is terribly miscasted this is a pretty weak movie coming I mean, in at number three the crow this is the newest film with bill skarsgård and i was hoping that it would be the best one of the sequels but this is another mess of a movie i like bill skarsgård but he's not the best within this movie the dialogue for him is quite simple but you he's not able Able to capture that emotional weight to this character because I really don't feel the love that he has with Shelly within this film. They spent a lot of time in the beginning trying to establish that love so it would be the center of his whole journey, but I didn't really feel the connection between the two. It's got some bloody moments. I was surprised with some of the kills within this film. The pacing is really off. At times it's terribly slow and I wanted to fall asleep so bad. And then at times it's action packed and then it's slow again. It's all over the place. And I just wasn't able to connect to the story and the characters within this film. The dialogue doesn't allow for the conversations to flow naturally. It takes way too long to establish itself. And it's a pretty, and it's a big letdown of a movie. It's one of the better looking films and it, it tries to maintain that gothic vibe to it but it ultimately feels very generic. Like there's no unique style to this movie. 
It feels very familiar to other movies. It tries to establish its tone like the original movie. The costume designs, the lighting, all of it feels just very safe. Like they were trying to do something original, but it just did not pay off. Coming in in second place, The Crow Salvation. Of the sequels, this is the one that I enjoyed the most. It's not a very good movie, but there were some redeeming qualities about this film. I liked Alex Corvus in here as our Crow character. You really honestly felt the emotional beat to this character. You felt the anger. You felt the unhinged moments from him as he's going on this revenge tear. I felt the anger from him and you felt like this character was spiraling out of control throughout this movie. And that's what works best for this movie is that character and how he becomes crazy throughout this movie. But the film's signature dark and moody vibe to it was captured fairly well within here. The use of shadows and dark colors fills this movie and it's able to work with its supernatural elements of the film. Kirsten Dunst is in this movie. It's not her best early role, but she works well within this film. While the films have a theme of revenge, this one felt like it was building more on the themes of justice, bringing the killers to justice. It felt like that was his big mission and we've seen that with all the other films, but this is one of the sequels that did it well with its script and its portrayal of the characters and the action and gothic vibe within it. But coming in in first place, The Crow with Brandon Lee. A lot of people really, really, really love this movie. I think it's good. It's not the best movie ever made. Obviously, it's the best Crow film. But what works best for this film is Brandon Lee. He works so well with in this film, and it's absolutely tragic what happened to him on set while filming this movie. Because Brandon Lee's portrayal is powerful. There's a lot of intensity to this character, a lot of vulnerability. He's able to convey all of the emotions in here, and you could see that he went all in with this performance. You could see that he had this potential to be a big star. This film could have really established himself as a big star because he works so well within here and his performance is very strong and emotional throughout this movie. And the film has never had a problem with its identity and working as a dark revenge thriller. By doing all of that, you're really able to focus on Eric's revenge storyline and allowing that character to become strong throughout the movie. You have a story of love and grief and revenge and it's able to balance all these themes really well and it's got a really good soundtrack. It's just able to add so much more to this movie. Really like The Crow but I'm not going to call it a perfect film. I love Brandon Lee's performance in here. The vibe of this movie, the themes of love, grief, redemption, all of that is very strong throughout this film. I'm so glad I rewatched it in preparation for the newest Crow film and I'm able to appreciate it a little more since the first time I did watch it. So there you guys have it. All five Crow films ranked worst to best. How would you rank them? Let me know in the comments section down below and stay tuned for more up and coming content like this. My name is Just Watches Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.